Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, as fight fans, right, custodians of the sport, so to speak, we should all be outraged. And I mean outraged by any idea that the winner of this Juan Manuel Marquez versus Mike Alvarado fight should somehow warrant a opportunity to fight for the title at 147 pounds against Manny Pacquiao. Right? That's simply absurd. Because Mike Alvarado has little, if any, experience in fighting at 147 pounds. And the water at 147 is deep. Right? There are too many real contenders out there at 147 pounds. For a guy with little experience at the weight class to somehow be anyone's mandatory down the road right to me this seems to be a blueprint by a promoter to shield his fighters let's be as blunt as possible right understand too that you need to pay attention to the weight divisions I believe they've been blurred because of Richland Provotnikov Bovodnikov fought Mike Alvarado at 140, took his title at 140, right? That was after Bovodnikov fought at 147 against Timothy Bradley and almost took his title. But understand, that doesn't mean that guys at 140 can magically jump to 147 and win titles, right? Now, I know here online many people are chomping at the bit to mention to me that I think based on styles that Amir Khan would have a chance against 147 pound Floyd Mayweather right I've pointed out that Amir Khan quite frankly moves faster faster foot speed and has the faster hand speed than Floyd who's slowing down at 37 and who doesn't like to hunt, he likes to be hunted at this stage in his career. But understand, I've never suggested that Amir Khan be a mandatory for Floyd. Right? Khan couldn't be a mandatory until he spent time at 147 pounds. Now here, think about it. How would Mike Alvarado ever qualify as a mandatory at 147 pounds after beating, let's say, one Manuel Marquez, right, who just lost to Timothy Bradley. Where does Bradley fit in all of this? So I would encourage people to look at the mechanics here of this fight. Quite frankly, it's outrageous. Let me make another point. I don't make this point lightly, okay? We've heard in the last few weeks, Freddie Roach admit that he didn't know what was in the drinks that his prized pupil, Manny Pacquiao, was taking in training for fights. Right? What that means is that Freddie Roach can't tell you one way or the other whether his fighter juiced. Right? Period. Let's also say, too, that Freddie Roach right personally believed and we know this because Freddie Roach has told us that the nutritionist and I'll spare his name here was shady we also know that that nutritionist got fired as I see it this is all part of a carefully planned don't ask don't tell situation in boxing right the nutritionist is technically an independent contractor not hired by the trainer Right, the boxer's gonna claim if the boxer's test ever comes back with anything illegal in it, the boxer's gonna claim that he didn't know what he was being given. 
No doubt the nutritionist at that point is going to say, how could this happen? I only gave him legal substances. Maybe it's from this, and I'm sure they have this planned ahead of time, tainted group of supplements that are sold over the counter that in the past at some time had some illegal substance in it. Right? Well, what I want people to do is to look closely at Juan Manuel Marquez. He is one of my favorite fighters. Right? But he's with Angel Heredia now. Now, all I can say is, without making any accusations whatsoever, I encourage everyone here online to research the background of Angel Heredia. Just do basic Google searches. See if there's any smoke there. See if at any time in the past Angel Heredia has ever admitted to giving athletes performance enhancing drugs or in obtaining performance enhancing drugs for athletes. Right? Then what I want you to do is to go back <clears throat> and I want you to look at films of Juan Manuel Marquez shortly before he signed on with Angel Heredia. Then I want you to observe films of Juan Manuel Marquez after he signed up with Angel Heredia. Right? Look at his body. Look at his muscle mass. Now, it's possible. It's possible that this is all on the up and up and is completely legal. Right? Maybe I'm throwing out the disclaimer for purely legal reasons. It's possible this is all legal. But the one thing I will say too is if it's all legal, this is new in boxing. Right? Guys in their late 30s don't suddenly start adding muscle. I'll tell you, I've been watching the sport a long time and I haven't seen a lot of that. I have seen guys who have kept themselves in shape throughout, able to, as their body ages and as they gain weight, make it to higher weight classes, think Bernard Hopkins, and of course because they're skilled, and Juan Manuel Marquez is one of the most skilled fighters in the game, be able to be successful. So maybe this is all on the up and up. But just understand that there's a new breed of nutritionists in the sport of boxing. Just understand that some of the biggest names in the sport are using these nutritionists. And they are adding muscle mass and stamina to their games. Now what relevance does that have to this Mike Alvarado fight? Well the point is this. Juan Manuel Marquez, forget the weight classes he came from. Forget Marquez being dominant at 130 and lower, right? One Manuel Marquez now is very much a welterweight. He's added muscle mass. You cannot think of him as a lightweight. <clears throat> you have to think of him now as a grown welterweight. Right? He's full grown. He's not gaining weight to be competitive. He's muscle bound at 147 pounds. Mike Alvarado, by contrast, isn't. Right? He ate his food at 140. Right? Let's go a step back. Two. What I want you to do is to look at a few films. Look at Mike Alvarado against Rita's Prescott. Now I know knockouts cause amnesia. Alvarado got the knockout late in that fight. Right? Don't lose your memory because of the knockout. Look at the rest of the fight. Rita's Prescott is out boxing Mike Alvarado during that fight. As good as Mike Alvarado is, he can be outboxed at times. Right? 
I consider Brandon Rios to be a warrior, but limited skill-wise in the ring. But yet, Brandon Rios was hanging with Mike Alvarado during their first fight. Right? It's a competitive fight. Let's just say I would expect Brandon Rios to get picked apart to death by Juan Manuel Marquez. Marquez is a premier technician. If you stand in front of him, you're going to get picked apart, dissected, deconstructed. Right? I didn't see Mike Alvarado doing a lot of deconstruction of Brandon Rios early in their fight. What Alvarado has, in my opinion, is great balance. He has built-in leverage. On film, it doesn't look like he's hitting you that hard. <clears throat> but then the other guy goes down as if they've been, as I like to say, in a car accident. Right? That punching power is really, or was really, his hallmark at 140 pounds. The problem is the punch might not carry at 147. It's unusual. It's outside the box. When you see someone like Ruslan Provotnikov gain weight and still have the punch. That's not something I assume is going to happen. Right? Well, let's just put it diplomatically. Marquez, who rolls with punches, has his hands up, is a technician who can defend himself, is hard to hit flush as it is. Right? Very hard to hit flush as it is. Against Mike Alvarado, he's going to be hard to hit, and worse yet, he might be able to take the punch. I like Juan Manuel Marquez in this fight. I think he has the experience of 147. I think his career has been rejuvenated by his association with Angel Heredia, right? We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. We'll assume it's all on the up and up and that we can chalk it up to new technology, right? But <clears throat> whatever the reason, his career has been rejuvenated at 147. We know he can go the distance at 147. He went the distance against Floyd Mayweather at 147. He went the distance against Manny Pacquiao at 147. He went the distance with Timothy Bradley at 147. We know that he has size and stamina at 147 with refined technical boxing skills, right? Mike Alvarado's chin got dented at 140 by Brandon Rios, right? He looked good in moving around the ring on a stationary Brandon Rios in the rematch, right? I don't consider Brandon Rios to be in Juan Manuel Marquez's class. Before I get a bunch of uh, emails saying you're too hard on Brandon Rios, understand Brandon Rios to me is one of the most courageous fighters in the game. Make no mistake about it. But I believe that the sport is boxing, not fighting. The guys I see at the top of this sport have a set of technical skills to go with their desire. Even great athletes, right? I would consider Vladimir Klitschko to be a great athlete, right? But yet, a guy like Vladimir Klitschko who might be able to just bum rush and overpower most people in the world without technique. Even a guy like Vladimir Klitschko comes in with a refined set of skills. You'll notice the jab. You'll notice the left hook. You'll notice the planned straight right that he hardly throws until he feels it's necessary. Right? I don't see the technical part of Brandon Rios's game. With Juan Manuel Marquez, it leaps out at you. Right? You see Marquez along the ropes, you're thinking, wow. Is he defenseless? Then someone with hand speed like Manny Pacquiao jumps in and gets knocked out. I was watching Marquez against Juan Diaz. Marquez has the unique ability when the bullets are flying all around him to stay calm. Right? So Juan Diaz had the upper hand early because Diaz is a lead puncher. Marquez is a counter puncher. Marquez is figuring out 
the angles. I believe Marquez even gets dropped in that fight. That's how calm he is. Marquez figured out that he could hit Diaz with uppercuts. Folks, Marquez starts throwing uppercuts with both hands. Right? To me, Marquez defines adaptive, reactive. It's not just him. Look in his corner. He has one of the sport's elite trainers in Nacho Beristain. They're going to come in, in my opinion, ready for Mike Alvarado. Marquez is going to find that he doesn't have the problems against Alvarado that he had against Timothy Bradley, where Bradley has foot movement that makes it hard to catch up with him when Bradley actually decides to box you. Let me just say this too. Had Bradley fought the same fight against Marquez that he fought recently against Manny Pacquiao, as much as I like Timothy Bradley, and I still think Bradley is a better fighter than Manny Pacquiao, as much as I think about Timothy Bradley, I would expect Bradley to lose if he were going to fight that kind of fight because Marquez, if you're in there just trying to knock out Marquez, right, you'd be playing right into Marquez's hands. This is an elite fighter who I suspect is going to be able to hand to land hard counters up top on Mike Alvarado just like Richmond Provodnikov did. I'm expecting Marquez in this fight to at first start on his back foot and then to come forward on his front foot knowing that he's the fighter with experience at 147, right? Alvarado stays in the pocket too long in general. I know he was out of the pocket against Brandon Rios in the rematch, but he stays in the pocket too long in my opinion. He's going to get deconstructed in that pocket by Juan Manuel Marquez. I like the older fighter here. I like the 40-year-old fighter here. I like Juan Manuel Marquez to win this fight, right? Let me say this, though. If Mike Alvarado wins the fight, I hope boxing fans then start asking why Mike Alvarado would be Manny Pacquiao's mandatory, right? I thought this division had guys like Keith Thurman, Kel Brook, Devin Alexander. <laughs> These are guys without titles right now who I thought, quite frankly, have done more at Ward 47 than Mike Alvarado would do even by winning this fight, right? If Alvarado gets lucky. So, always be on the lookout for boxing politics. I don't mind if they try to say that Manny Pacquiao has chosen to fight Mike Alvarado should Alvarado beat Marquez. You know, champions do have discretionary defenses they could make. If anyone has earned the right to pick an opponent in a non-mandatory defense, it's the champion in the division. Manny Pacquiao is a champion at 147 pounds. But don't try to sell it to me as a mandatory defense. Okay, I don't care that everyone's with a big-name promoter. Right? Don't insult the fans' intelligence. A guy cannot be guest-starring in a division and then suddenly somehow become... The mandatory contender. That seems ridiculous to me. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and if there are any names at 147 that you feel I've missed, I understand too. But there are going to be new names at 147 shortly. Danny Garcia, unbeaten Danny Garcia, is coming to 147. There are other guys with punches that do carry. Uh, Lucas Matisse, right, might be at 147, right? If you feel there are guys at 147 I've missed and you want to discuss them, please, by all means, feel welcome to do so in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.